In this video, we're going to look at using the binomial distribution and how the normal can be used to approximate the binomial distribution. So I've written out two formulas here that we're going to use later on. I'm going to speed a little bit past part A because um, if you guys would like me to show you how to use the binomial PD or CD function in the calculator, you can just let me know. But in the binomial, um, when we use it, is where there's two outcomes, either one or the other. So here, when George throws the ball, he's either going to hit, he's going to hit the target or he's not going to hit the target. That probability of him hitting the target is our value of P. N is the sample size, which is how many times he's going to carry out the experiment, which is 15 times. Now, on my calculator, probability of x equaling anything will always get me the binomial PD of a function. However, probability of x being less than or equal to something will always get me the CD of the function. So finding the first part of the question is pretty easy. If I go to my calculator, I go to binomial PD, so I click menu, um, I then click on distribution, and then I can see binomial PD. I then get three options, X, N, and P. X is what it's equal to for the binomial PD function, which is three. N is a sample size of 15, and P is the probability that I mentioned there. And that gets you the value. So I'm just gonna very quickly type that in. 315, 0.48, and that's equal to 0 0.0196. So it goes on quite long. Let's say 0 0.02, that'd be fine. Now, x is bigger than or equal to 5. Now, this is a bit more difficult because that doesn't fall into the category of CD or PD. And it doesn't make sense to use PD because then you'd have to find equal to 5, equal to 6, equal to 7, all the way up to 15. But the numbers that are included are 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15. The numbers that are excluded are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So essentially, if we do 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 4, that gets you what you want, everything else. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to find the probability of x being less than or equal to 4. We're going to go back to distribution. We're going to go to the CD function now. And then I click variable. And then for our x value, we're going to put 4. N is going to be 15. P is still going to be 0 0.48. And that gives you a probability of 0 0.0986. I'm losing over my words. 8, 9. Quite a few numbers. But then we're doing 1 minus that because that's what we're interested in. So we can then save that function in our calculator and then we can go back to just normal calculation and carry it out. And that will get you 0 0.92. That's everything for that question. Let's now move on to approximation. So in the normal approximation, we need two things. We need the mu, the mean, and the square of the standard deviation or the variance. Now the mean can be found by multiplying the sample size by the probability in the binomial distribution. 15 times 0 0.48 is equal to, I'm just going to very quickly do that. And by the way, there's two conditions for which you can actually use the normal to approximate the binomial. That is when there's a large sample size, which tends to be double digits, and when the probability is close to 0.5. It tends to be anywhere between 0.35 and 0.65. Now here, the mean would be 7.2, according to the calculator, and the variance would be NP, which is basically just the mean, multiplied by 1 minus P, which is 1 minus 0.48. Carrying that out, you get yeah, 3.744. So essentially, we can replace this mu with 7.2 and the square of the standard deviation or the variance with 3.784. Now that we've got those, we can actually um, find the normal approximation. So more than 110 times, we don't just take bigger than 110 because there's something called a continuity correction when you use the normal approximation. What we do is when it's a greater than, we take greater than the upper bound, but if you were finding less than, you take less than the lower bound. Note that you don't have to do greater than or equal to or less than or equal to with a normal distribution because it's a continuous distribution. So it also involves values between, let's say, 110 and 111. Here we're doing a greater than, so we need to find the upper bound of 110, which would be 110.5, and that's the value that you put in into the normal distribution. So I'm now going to go to my calculator, go to menu, distribution, normal CD. My lower, I'm going to put it as 110.5. My upper, I'm just going to put a very large number, like six nines or five nines. Um, the standard deviation, I'm going to put the square root of 3.744. And the mean, I'm going to put 7.2. And what that gives me is zero. So, so I'm just going to double check that. Ah, I see, I made a mistake. Before, If you're about to comment on my mistake, then 
uh, you can rub that comment out now because at the end the sample size has changed to 250 so that affects the whole experiment now because it affects the mu and the um, variance sorry about that let's fix that so if we instead did n of 250 times 0.48 sorry about that i didn't have time to do these questions beforehand so a little bit of a silly mistake there 120 multiplied by 0 0.52 that would give 62.4. So not too much, too many things to change. We then go back to the normal distribution function. So seven and then, um, yeah, normal CD. Our lo lower is still gonna be 110.5. Our upper again is gonna be a very large number. The standard deviation is going to be, um, so it's no longer this here. Um, we found that the variance, which is the square of the standard deviation, is 62.4. So we're going to do the root of 62.4. And then our mean is going to be 120. And that gives you a value of 0 0.885. And that's more reasonable. I was going to say the answer I got before was 0, which is just unreasonable. But that's it. That's everything for this question. Hopefully that um, made sense how you can use the normal distribution function, when you can use it to approximate the binomial distribution and how you can use it with continuity correction. Thanks for watching the video guys, hope it helped. If you have any A-level maths or physics tutoring inquiries, be sure to send me a message at www.excelineducation.co.uk.